Welcome to one of the most detailed and modifiable roguelites I have ever played. Vellum just dropped last Thursday, March 28th, and has even more content and depth than I've realized after playing the demo from Nextfest in January. Hey all, Jesper here, and welcome to another roguelite. But this isn't just a regular run-of-the-mill roguelite. This is... Okay, so, right. The initial comparison I have for Vellum is Wizard 101 and Risk of Rain 2. Have you heard of anybody compare a game to Wizard 101 in the year 2024, or even last year? Like... <laughs> Who compares games to this? Now, quick disclaimer, since I did play the demo back in January, my starting equipment and my starting abilities and stuff are a little bit different than what you might experience if you just bought the game today, which I highly recommend you do. If you buy Vellum because of me, oh my God, I'm an influencer, baby, let's go. But honestly, it's a really cool, fun game. Uh, I'm super excited to show this. And I'm super excited to showcase this because I have so far, I mean, it's, it's brand new, it's super small. I have seen no good like video for this game. I am here to show you as much as I physically can in a little bit of time as possible. Possible, so I hope you enjoy. So let's just dive in, shall we? So let's take a super general field of view at everything before we jump into the run, and then we'll jump into the run where we will dig our hands into the soil, and they will be just so black and brown, and there's gonna be some worms on there, and like, I really am gonna wanna just lick all the dirt off my hand, because it just looks, you know, oh, it's so rich. So first off, we start in this library, this absolutely stunning, mmm, yes, take a look around, oh, look at, look at all the background, look at all the books. I'm here in my library, and you wanna know what I love more than knowledge, more knowledge. You'll also be greeted by a massive ink fountain, which is just the basis of life, basically. So this whole game is around like ink and you're a scribe. You're here to write the biggest story or a, a story of some sort. Or, I, it's super cool. It's, it's something I've never really thought of before, except for Epic Mickey. Epic Mickey was about ink, wasn't it? Oh my God. This has a much better gameplay and story and anything than Epic Mickey. I will guarantee you that. I've played Epic Mickey for like, I'm getting off track. At the opposite side of the ink fountain, is this giant floating galaxy ball thing, which is called the Scriptorium. And it's the basis for all of your abilities throughout the game that you'll work on and improve and level up and all this sort of stuff. So this is the basic upgrade path. Well, not even path really. It's just like, it's your basic upgrades outside of the runs. Oh my gosh, when I say roguelite, there are so many aspects of roguelites that they, they like they, there's just so much there's so much customization that we will get into and i'm just i'm so excited so oh what's this we're gonna go over to this book thing what is this we're gonna look at our abilities right so there's four primary abilities ranging from you know i can throw a spear i can just throw some ink i can whip some ink like a like a little like a whip uh or i can just summon anchors i can just summon anchors and throw anchors at my enemies it is crazy so that's the primary ability and that's your m1 whatever secondary ability is called a spender because you generate ink your mind ability your primary ability is a generator and we'll get into what that looks like when we get into the game um, but you generate ink and then your right click expels the ink it's a spender so you either summon a bird which is pretty cool you summon an anvil which is awesome i really like the anvil and then there's you can just like throw out a clock uh, and it does like an aoe spin over time damage which is really cool and then you just have a dash or teleport i'm super like not used to the teleport whatsoever it's super different but it's a really cool alternative i'm just partial to the dash because i like being able to have a lot of movement speed onto the scriptorium now the scriptorium is super like boom like there's so much data it's not as much data as the path of exile skill tree but it, it's super easy it's not actually a skill tree it's just you you upgrade it with your ink blots that you get or well, i forget what they're called we'll, we'll get them at the end of at the end of the video though but you get these ink things for basically just completing a run whether you die or you succeed you win and they can be put into upgrades so these are this is your main upgrade path things will make sense after you play like one or two or three runs some of them will offer just basic upgrades to like your movement speed or your defense or your attack and then some of them will unlock other skill trees for other things so if we go into the inscriptions there's five different categories of inscriptions at the moment and they've teased another one as in teased it's in the game that says hey it's coming soon so there's signatures which we'll get to in a second the inscriptions are one for neutral which means you can use them across any signature you use and then there's one skill tree for well not skill tree well you know it is kind of a skill tree because you kind of pick one so there's inscription levels for the different signatures so there's four signatures there's blue which is 
primarily like your damage over time, your yellow, which is like a bonus attack or a bonus damage attack, your green, which is my personal favorite because you summon a little dude that just does your bidding basically. And then red is for lifesteal, which I haven't toyed around with yet, but I'm super excited to get there. And so each level you get like a level, at level four of the scriptorium, you get the first level at like level seven and then level 10, some, it, it's, it'll be on the screen, but you get to pick one of these out of the three at a time to go into your run. So you get to pick and choose what kind of upgrades you want for your playstyle. There's another thing that runs in a playstyle. Playstyle is a huge component of this game because not only is there four different primary attacks, there's three different secondary attacks and there's four different signatures. Like, come on, there's just, there's insane amounts of, like for the math folks out there, it's a lot, it's a big number, right? All right, I think I've covered just about everything I can for outside of the run. So I'm gonna toss it over to her reporter, Gavin, on the field and he's gonna show you what a real run feels like and looks like. Thanks, narrator G Spree. All right, so let's take a look. We're gonna go past our, our ink fountain here and then we're gonna go over to our books. So our books is how you select a run. And so basically you, you start off with one and then I believe as you complete more, you get more levels. I still haven't fully figured this out. I'm still working on it. They each have their own like play style. Okay, so this one uh, provides boons for all scribes, work together to evolve its influence. Okay, cool. Uh, the second one is the wolves, which you, unlock after beating the scribes of torn for the first time dawn and dusk will fight alongside the scribes the font will help you feed and empower these companions so they're basically just like little minions that help you out so we can go in with three minions if i if i have this green signature right now and then quests and trials of a mercenary band the font offers a selection of quests with grander rewards scribes will band together for glory uh just for the sake of uh i want to see the wolves again we're gonna go select this so we're gonna go start this and be summoned and the ink will spread us to new lands. And I actually really like this uh, transitioning. So you can also you create more difficulty for yourself if you want to. I'm not good enough yet and I haven't explored the game enough yet to, to embark with any more of these just yet. So we're just gonna go base and then get soaked into the fountain. All right. So this is actually like a super cool transition. I'm actually like super in love with this transition. So right away, uh, we're met with three different scrolls we can use to power up our, I believe it's typically, actually it can be whatever. You get three just random scrolls. So the first one is Knight's Patience here. Our Punctuate, which is my M1, deals 100% damage at full charge, but uh, charges slightly slower, so that's fine. Uh, battle standard green signature summons a banner granting 30% damage to scribes and then I get a barrier buffer uh, Gain 25% chance to restore 50 health when barrier breaks. Um, I'm actually going to do the punctuate uh, does more damage at full charge, but it takes longer. And then since this is chapter one, we don't have any enemy banners yet, but we will get into those. And here's dawn and dusk. Uh, this will little wolves that'll fight for us. So this is just my punctuate. I can charge this up and then shoot it out and then it charges a little slower, but I honestly can't tell. Um, I don't know if this is because it's my first run of the day, um, but I, I honestly can't tell that it charges that much slower. So I'm also using the uh, the dash, as I mentioned earlier, I still haven't gotten the, the hang of the teleportation yet, but and you know, that's pretty cool. So you can see uh, on the right here of the right of my character, I have my, gen my generator, my ink generator, my mana. On a fully charged punctuate, it fully charges uh, one of your gens, so I can use and then activate like right away. And it actually, it's one of the reasons it is my favorite weapon. I can right click and it sends out that bird. Uh, and then as you can see, my generator is completely empty. So I gotta generate that back up. And then that passive uh, for the for the green signature I've got. I believe it said for the green signature, it empowers my little, my little minion man after using it. Uh, so, all right, so that was chapter one, wave one. Uh, we kind of go through all of these uh, little steps here. So now we get to pick up an upgrade. So Rider's Flock, every swoop bird uh, summoned grants 10% damage to subsequent swoops for three seconds. So if I want a rapid fire, that would be a really good choice. Uh, inflated ID, each use of punctuate gives your next swoop damage. So this is actually stacking, and this is really good with certain things, uh, with certain primary attacks, um, where you can hit your primary attacks and stack up a bunch so that your right click just does more damage, up to 200% more. Uh, and then 30% speed while your barrier is empty. I'm actually going to... I'm going to do the rapid fire swoop. Because I like to right click immediately after charging up an M1. So that other one wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. So you also have font powers, right? So this is another thing that makes it runs just incredibly customizable and unique. So you get to choose between three at the beginning. Um, that you can put uh, tokens into, font points into. Um... The font supplies bones nearby. Scribes can 
pick up and feed bones to dawn and dusk so this is that uh upgrading the wolf that we talked about at the beginning uh dawn and dusk can feed on nearby scribes generator uh and then once you feed them up to 10 uh it gives you this 15 percent damage each time they're fed uh up to 10. Uh, dawn and dust deal 15 damage to nearby scribes but feed each time so i don't really want to do that and i have plenty of generators to go around so once you unlock uh here so it says three more to unlock so i only have one so each person so the scribes get four right so i've i'm playing by myself right now so i have four if i'm playing with two people we'll each get two points if i'm playing with three i don't really know how that works i've never played with three but i believe if we play with four then we each get one so then you unlock the second row which font flings supportive boons towards the scribe which i actually really like so we're just gonna pick that we're not gonna read the rest uh, for sake of time and then we get to pick out another uh, another scroll here so inkling cast causes an implosion that pulls nearby foes which i actually really like uh, punctuation punctuate has a 50 percent chance to fire a second time um and then this is just an m dash which m dash is just your movement ability i'm not sure why it's called m dash specifically but it's just uh it's just another name for the dash so i'm gonna pick up that double uh the chance for the double hit and now since we're getting into the into uh, the run we have buffs for the enemy so this is something that you get after beating the first little node you get one of these after every single round and then uh, once you start the boss run you empower the boss in some way so what what we kind of like to do is on these ravings so ravings are the beasts splices are the the close quarter brawlers little mini dudes and then there's ranged people which i forget what they're called it starts with a t or something um so these plant mines with the, when they're not within 50 meters of the scribe more move faster based on their targets missing health and then splices gain 40 percent speed for five seconds after dealing damage i am going to move faster because i want to buff the crap out of the ravings because i think it would be really funny i'm honestly not going into this run thinking that i'm going to win uh, it's mostly just for demonstration. So typically, another thing to point out is that they usually have like a little side quest, which is at the top right here. So summon and defeat an elite. So I think if I go over to this exclamation point, so this is how you get an extra little scroll. Oh my god, so that's how this guy spawned. So now I press Q, uh, and then that uses my, uh, my signature, which turns the little minion that we had that was flinging stuff into this big old green dude. Alright, so now we get the scroll because we killed it, so Inkling Cast flings an orb towards you, granting plus one if caught. Ooh. For the sake of timing and everything, I'm just going to skip to the end of this chapter. So again, we get to pick up another scroll. Uh, your Inkling attacks 25% faster. So you can, you can typically get some uh, scrolls that work well with others so that you can form this kind of build that you, that you got going on. So I'm actually going to upgrade my swoop just because. Alright, so <laughs> we get to pick up another uh as usual i should say it's not like it's not like oh my god we get to pick up another one of these so ravings plant mines which is the one we skipped on earlier torn arrived with plus one invulnerability and so any keywords will be highlighted and they will be shown uh exactly what they do below it which is absolutely amazing i love that this game does it so boss fight time boss fight time here we go boys so chapter six boss fight so we get to pick up something for the boss uh, when a boss reaches 40% health, all scribes become silenced for 8 seconds. Boss abilities gain 50% size, or, and a rewardless elite reinforces the boss at 80% health. I'm going to do the silence for 8 seconds. As long as I can dash, uh, we'll be good. I should have read what silence does exactly. So I also have something that increases uh, the damage that my, my right click does, my bird. But it costs uh, 2 generator now. Oh my goodness gracious me. Yeah, th that's where the this is where the jump height really helps. I like being able to jump over it, or just having the insane amount of movement speed is absolutely awesome. I can summon my my little scribe thing again, and I really need this barrier right now. Is he just killing everything around me? Is that what's going on? Oof, my shield is broken. I must run for my life. This is not looking too good. Oh, that was my silence. I think. All right. Well. Oh, I'm dead. Not an unsatisfying end to the to the run, personally. Um, so you also get these quill marks at the end uh, of your run. You also unlock scrolls, uh, some extra scrolls uh, upon beating the boss. Uh, but the scrolls or the the quill marks is what the big thing is. So the the quill marks is what you can use to uh, further your upgrades in 
the scriptorium. So I've unlocked the fourth level for my signature ink inscriptions. Um, so we also have 5% damage and some other stuff. I'm going to throw it back to narrator G Spree to end out this video. All right. Thanks, field reporter G Spree. I'm back. You know, it's, it's me. Whatever. Hello. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. This video was an absolute blast to make. And I absolutely love this game. I can't wait to play it more. I'm super excited for this game to succeed. And it's going to be awesome. And I hope you like it. I hope you comment. I hope you uh, subscribe. I'm just going to be making more videos in general. I got main videos on Monday, and then we're streaming Baldur's Gate typically on Tuesday. That's kind of like an up-in-the-air thing. I'm about to beat Terraria this Thursday. I was actually going to beat Terraria last Thursday, but Vellum came out. It's like, I have to play this game, right? So Terraria's got one more week, and then I'm going to move on to, like, a RPG or something. I don't know. Sorry for that cut. I kind of just forgot what I was going to say. But I'm going to move on to an RPG, so... Or something with a little bit more story. So I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys tune in to more videos. Uh, there's an absolute boatload of videos. I have, like, over 300 videos. So if you see something you like, you know, click on it. But I'll catch you later, or I'll catch you on stream. Have a good night, or good day, or whatever.